talking about rigging tips for trade shows and events part two as it relates to things you may want to hang and display in an event space like signage or decor. So let's get started and jump right in. In our first video we talked about how rigging is sometimes underestimated. That is when you think of rigging signage you're thinking of it as something simple like this, like it's no big deal. As a matter of fact, probably it's as easy as this, no problem. So why does everyone seem to think that it's more like this? Or at least when you get the rigging estimate, uh, you kind of wonder what all is going to be included if they really think they're going to have to do something this involved. Well, we concluded that while we tend to think of rigging as no big deal, properties and rigging professionals take it very seriously. And that's because any time you take responsibility for the safety of others and their property, it's important to act with care and proper respect. And that's the bottom line. It's about respect. Give it and you will generally enjoy it in return. Forget it and go off with an attitude and you'll probably not have a very good experience from the people working your event. And uh, these guys are pros and they're the ones who make it happen. So let's start this next segment with a question. You know, if you can avoid rigging, should you try? It may seem silly, but is there something you can do to avoid having to pay the rigging charges? Well, yeah, there is. If there's a way that you can use an existing structure or make a structure that is ground supported, then you won't have to use the rigging. Uh, and there are different ways to do that. In the first example, we see trussing that's being used as the support structure to rig off of. And in the second example, uh, it's the pipe and drape. So you can rig off of existing structures that are self-supportive and it's an option that you just have to run the numbers and see if you save more money by building a support structure instead of doing the rigging. Uh, so that's one possibility if you can avoid the rigging uh, maybe there's some savings there but if you can't and professional rigging is required early communication is critical I, I can't stress that enough and continued dialogue is a must when you're running a crew uh, everyone needs to be productive on the clock and if they don't know what to do it's kind of expensive to stand around talking about it so make sure everyone has a copy of the plan that you've devised ahead of time and stay calm and and make sure that uh, that everybody understands what the plan is and rem remember drama tends to cost extra so there's no reason to get upset uh, the guys are professionals and they are truly there to serve so stay calm and you know a great idea is to bring snacks if you really want to score some flexibility points if you can bring snacks and drinks it's a minor investment that will score major appreciation from the crew at least I've always found that it works wonders but uh, beyond that that piece of paper we had up there a moment ago I pulled out a couple of sections for you to see in a, a little bit more detail this is a sample that you'll find in many venues and some of the details may be a little different depending on the market that you're working in but this is representative and so you'll notice that uh, it doesn't take much to get hourly rates of a hundred dollars or more and the crews are typically as you see uh, gonna be three people at a minimum and uh, when you make a rigging call uh, those three people are gonna be there for a minimum of four hours so you have 12 hours on the clock uh, before you've hung the first sign that's kind of your minimum guarantee and that kind of makes sense because if the guys are going to come out and work um, you know it has to be worth it for them to get at least a half a day in but it gets expensive and uh, that's the same for the strike at the end so um, uh, when you think it's all over it's really not because those same guys come back with those same minimums and help you get everything out of the ceiling that you put in to begin with and when it comes to rules uh, speaking of rules have you ever heard of the meal penalty. 
Um, well, it can be kind of scary if you're not expecting it, but if you plan for it, you'll be fine. Um, but the meal penalty and the break penalty, it, it runs like this. When you, when you start a crew, uh, let's say they start at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, they will work for two hours, and then typically uh, it's expected that they get a 15-minute break. They will work for as much as three hours if something's going on and you can't really break them at the two-hour mark, but if you work them past three hours, without a 15 minute break you will incur a break penalty uh, then after having worked four hours uh, not including the 15 minute break um, after working four hours um, you will then be expected usually to uh, have a, a meal uh, one hour break for lunch or for a meal and uh, they will work as much as five hours uh, without that meal like I said if you're working on something that's important and it's hard to give them a break but if they work past five hours without a one hour meal break you will incur a meal penalty and uh, so those things are stuff that you need to plan for ahead of time and schedule out the day appropriately so that you can plan in the breaks and the meals and um, everything will go a lot smoother if you know that uh, going in. Um, so those are some of the rules and, and rates and regulations that you need to be aware of. Um, how many rig points do you actually need? Well, in this room there are basically no rig points that are accessible in the ceiling uh, by any of the outside crew. Uh, we couldn't touch the ceiling but the perimeter walls have rig points that we can get to. And so we um, we decided to design, if you look at the blue arrow, we decided to design a truss work that ran down the center of the room. So we would have a continuous set of rig points all the way down the center of the room and uh, that way we didn't have to worry about individual rigging points uh, because we had that to go to. And once the crew got that rigged for us, with their permission we were allowed to work off of that truss that they rigged and uh, we didn't have to have them with us so it saved us significantly on labor charges and that's one little tip that you might want to try to design in uh, to whatever it is that you're doing. Um, they came in the following day and checked and make sure that everything that we did was up to snuff and uh, the green arrow shows uh, some additional rigging that they did the following day uh, as well as with the rest of, of the show rigging that they had to do. So again if you can if you can plan ahead for rigging uh, and, and make it so that it's uh, something that's advantageous that way, uh, you can save quite a bit of time. Here's another example of doing the same thing. The rigging truss is in the middle and that's what we went up to to rig. You'll find that it's quite common to be able to do it that way and uh, the house is usually pretty reasonable to work with you as long as you're reasonable to work with them. It's not a guarantee but it's definitely worth discussing and it can cut down quite a bit on the house labor uh, that is usually at a much higher rate than, than what your crew might be that you bring in. Uh, and if in doubt, uh, you may consider hiring a rigging professional to act as your liaison on the project if you're not already working with a company that can handle these issues for you. It can be well worth the investment. So, uh, and to recap, start early and be serious about respecting the trade. Have a plan and make sure to communicate it without drama to everybody on the crew. Because of liability insurance uh, issues, it's now required at most big properties that you have to use their crew and it can be expensive, but it's manageable if you know how. And um, that's the tips and tricks that I have for you in part two when you actually have to work with a rigging crew. And I hope it's been helpful to you and thanks for joining us to discuss this part two. If we can be of assistance to serve you, please do reach out and get in touch. Thanks again.